sound this conference a separate will now be recorded. Or can we add that to the sheet we already have? Repeat that. So does it need to be on a separate Excel sheet or does it just add on to the one that we have? Add on to the one you have. You will have your beginning balances and everything from the first 40. So you're adding on then the next 40. Okay. So for the students who are completing the midterm virtually, you'll be doing an income statement that would look similar to a sales. We don't have a cost of goods sold, but you left the sales return operating expense and you know gross profit and then less the operating expenses. That part stays the same until you, you get to the net income before taxes. Then you're given a tax rate that you will have to apply to come up with the taxes that will be owed to get your net income after taxes. You have to make an AJE for these taxes. So that's the last journal entry. So you come up with the income before taxes, apply your tax rate, make an AJE to reflect those taxes. And we'll talk about that a little bit and you get your net income after taxes. Then you'll have two balance sheets, the beginning of the year and the end of the year. So typically the beginning of the year, you comes first and then the end of the year is is behind that so it's a little reverse here but that's not a big deal this will be year but typically year one is here and year two is here so that's what you will reflect on the spreadsheet are there any questions if not you know as you go through look at it and see you have until next tuesday to get those done And of course, next Tuesday, we uh, will be meeting on campus. You get what done next Tuesday? Yeah, next Tuesday, we meet on campus. But now you said something is due on Tuesday. For the A students, they have a take home involving 80 journal entries that is due next Tuesday. Everybody else will do a review, will do a study problem that's due on Thursday, and then the exam will be virtually on Thursday for other students. This Thursday? This Thursday, the midterm. And we'll go over what that looks like. Now I sent to you a review document. So this should be in course content on the AJE. So to do work with this and, and do the review and hopefully help with the understanding a little bit more about adjusting your own entries. And let's make sure we understand the purpose. They are internal financial transactions that are occurring. And if we're going to appropriately match expenses with recognized revenue, then we've got to make these adjusting entries. If the adjusting entries are not made, the balance sheet is incorrect and the income statement is incorrect. So that's why we make adjusting entries. So they're internal transactions and we're going to review all four today. Now, we started with unearned revenue and we said adjusted journal entry type two. 
and we said that this was the, you know, probably the easiest of just the entry. There's a preceding entry where you receive cash. And then at the end of the period, you make the adjusting entry because you have performed the services. In the preceding entry, earned revenue, there's a liability. Your goal is to you know, get your services done and convert that liability to revenue. Then we begin to look at prepaid expenses. Once again, there's a preceding entry to buy supplies or other assets, prepaid insurance, equipment, auto, and we and we credit cash, our accounts payable, our notes payable. That's the preceding entry. Then we make an adjusting entry to recognize the expenses, and we're gonna credit the asset for supplies and prepaid insurance, which are short-term assets. But if we have a long-term asset, such as auto equipment, assets that are gonna last more than a year, we're gonna credit accumulated depreciation so that we can always know what the original cost was of a long-term asset. Uh, but the net result is the same. We're gonna quickly look at examples of types two and one and two. Then we're gonna go on to types three and four. And your uh, informal quiz today is going to be to make these subsequent entries. You're going to fill this in. So does everyone have this uh, insert? It should have it in course content. So your job, Ms. Nichols, is to make this journal entry here. And so, you know, so we go through and we talk about it, then you all are gonna put these journal entries in for me as a class. And so, we'll talk about it, but when, Type three objection journal entry, Roman number three, are crude revenues. And if revenues have been earned, we're going to debit an asset and we're going to credit revenue. And what you're going to discover is that we've already been doing adjusting entry three. We have already been doing adjusting entry three. Then adjusting entry four is is a big thing we have to do. We have to accrue expenses if we've incurred those expenses, even though we have not paid them yet. If we don't do it, expenses are understated and liabilities are understated. So note these little rules about what's happening. You know, I, asked, I think I asked this last time on the account status before the adjustment. So on prepaid expenses, assets are overstated, expenses are understated until you make the AJE. On unearned revenues, liabilities are overstated, revenue is understated until you make the AJE. And we'll talk about three and four. Are there any preliminary questions at this point? Any burning questions? Okay, here are your transaction types. And what you're gonna see is, I put the adjusting journal entries in red. So 13, 14, and 15 are adjusting journal entries, 20 and 21 are adjusting journal entries. Note that they are outside of one through 11A. They do not involve cash. So on your sheet, I put in red, 
and you can highlight it any way you want to as we work with this, where the adjusting entries are. And for the A students, you will be making an adjustment here also. So I just put that down. So when you see it with your drone entry, you know that's a 17 for bad deaths. Then I've come to the chart of accounts again. And I put in red the entries that are typically involved, the entries that are typically involved when we make adjusting entries, excuse me, the accounts that are involved. And I'll go on and do bad debt expense. And I will go on and do the allowance for doubtful accounts. So now I have put in red, the accounts, then I've showed you where they are type-wise. And now we're going to go through and look at earned revenues again briefly. And remember, everybody is responsible for earned revenues and supplies. Everybody is responsible for knowing how to do that. And we said unearned revenue occurred when a company receives cash win prior to the performance of the services. The company's got the cash, but it can't recognize revenue until it has performed the services or delivered the goods. So let's look look at this transaction. Assume GameStop collects $10 in advance from 200 customers for a game that will arrive in two months. Two months later, the games arrive and they are picked up by 150 customers. I want you to make the preceding entry and then the adjusting entry. So I'm giving you all five minutes to make the preceding entry and the adjusting entry and we'll go over it. And of course, you know, you, what you know, you're going to learn more if you try, then we review it rather than you just write, uh, watch me work it. So remember, everybody is responsible. And a key thing on adjusting entries is that it's always going to look like this. So that's why I got them highlighted in red. Whenever you got to earn earn revenue, this is the adjusting entry. You just got to put those dollar amounts in. So I'm give you all about three to five minutes, I guess, to make those two adjusting entries. And everybody's supposed to be able to make these two adjusting entries.
Now you have this insert, and so hopefully you you got the insert pulled up and you're working on. It. So you got this insert in course content, and hopefully you got it pulled up and you're working on it. So you better follow right along. Then when it's time for you to make a calculation, you can make it. Camera should be on so I can kind of see how you all are doing, where you are. Do we have these entries made? Do we have these entries made? Uh, I think I got it. All right, Kurt, what do you have? Okay, I have the first entry was it says cash and unearned revenue. So you're going to you want to times the two hundred customers by the ten dollars of each, and you're gonna get two thousand dollars, and you're gonna debit two thousand for cash and credit two thousand for unearned income, and that's the type four. Any questions about anybody? All right, go on, hey, Barry. And it says only 150 customers picked uh picked up picked up the game. So then you're gonna times that by the 10, and you get 1,500. And that's what that's how many picked up you have the remaining. Like what's left over is 500. So that's what's left over in your account. You credit unearned revenue for 1,500 and sales for 1,500. Will you debit unearned for 1,500? Uh, yeah. Yeah, and credit sales. Are there questions by anybody? Can everybody do this one? Is there anybody who can't do it? Okay. Let's move on to prepaid expenses. Most assets are prepaid expenses. We put them in the asset account when they're acquired, but a business only buys assets to generate revenue. And so when they're buying supplies, when they're getting insurance, when they're buying equipment and autos, those items are gonna eventually become an expense. They're bought, but we have to put the expense portion on the income statement to see if they generate a revenue. You know, think about it. If we were selling shoes and we bought some shoes and put them in inventory and sold them, and if we kept the shoes on the balance sheet, never put them on the income statement, how would we ever know we made any money? So all expenses, once you get to from inventory on over, are basically prepaid expenses 
that eventually an adjusted entry has to be made so that we can see if they generated revenue or if the revenues exceeded our expenses. They expire with the pass of time, such as insurance or equipment, or through uses such as supplies. If you don't make these entries, the assets are overstated, the expenses are understated. And the AJE is always going to be a debit to an expense account and a credit to an asset account. That's what the AJE is always going to look like. So here we have some supplies. And it says assume supplies of $4,000 are purchased paying cash and another $3,000 was purchased on account. Inventory reveals that only 1,000 in supplies on hand at the end of the period. Make the entries to buy the supplies and record to adjust the entry. So based on these facts, make the entry to buy the supplies, and then make the entry for the AJE. So I'll give you a few minutes on that. Mr. Boyd, I have a question. Yes. Um, are these problems in the book? I worked on these last night and I put them on an insert in course content. Oh, okay. Thank you. So once again, this is an insert I put in. So you'd have, we do this review and you'd have it all right there together. So it'll be a little more concise for you and organized. So hopefully you've gone the course content, you pulled this up and you are working this on this insert, okay? And remember, everybody, remember, everybody's got to be able to do this one also. You got to be able to do unearned revenue and you got to be able to do supply. And you all have been making those first two entries since day one. So it should not be anything strange. So what's the journal entry to buy the cash, buy the supplies of cash? Wait, what did you say? What's the first journal entry buying the supplies for cash? The first journal entry is going to be you're going to debit supplies for four thousand and credit cash for four thousand. And what's our second entry to purchase? It's going to be, you're going to debit supplies for 3000 and credit accounts payable for 3000 Okay. Now, if we look at a T account for supplies right now, there's 4000 in it, and there's 3000 in it. So that gives us a subtotal of 7,000. 
then we look at the problem and it says, when we do the inventory, only 1,000 in supplies are on hand. So it's saying this balance in supplies is now $1,000. What is our adjusting entry going to be? You're going to credit supplies expense for 6,000 and then supplies. No, you're going to debit supplies expense for 6,000 and credit supplies for 6,000. So it's always the difference. So we're going to debit supplies expense 6,000. This AJE always looks like this. In credit supply. You just got to get the amount in, but that's how the AJE is going to look. And that's a type 13. So when we post it. <coughs> it's going to be the same. Debit seven, credit six. A thousand is left. <laughs> so the AJE is always the difference when we're dealing with supplies. And in most times, it's the difference between what we bought and what's left. That's what you use, that's what you spent. Are there any questions? I have a question, Mr. Boyd, and it's probably going to be like the most stupidest questions you've ever heard. You say that? Oh, I, yeah, because I'm I'm just letting you know. Okay, so for you to get seven thousand, you added the four thousand and three thousand and got seven thousand, and then for you to get the um one thousand, you just subtracted the two numbers, and then you did seven thousand minus one thousand and got the six thousand. Correct. Okay, maybe it wasn't that. Go back to the. That's a very good question, Kennedy. So you haven't peep out. Never hold back on your questions. I was going to ask you to go back to the uh, question for me so I can read it. I guess I read it wrong. It says that supplies of 4000 are purchased paying cash and 3000 was purchased on account. And you've been in stores and you've seen people taking inventory, right? Has everybody been in store for people taking inventory? That's why they're doing that. They bought it. They determine how much has been sold by taking the difference between what's there, what they bought, and what's left on the shelf. That's how you see it in pharmacies, grocery stores, and everything else. That's how they determine the expense. So they bought 7,000, that's fine. How much of it has been utilized? That's the internal transaction that has to be recorded. Are there any further questions? Okay, so let's just remember that all students are expected to be able to do these two. Okay, so let's move on to prepaid insurance. And we now get to our A and B students and what they're expected to be able to do. Okay, on October 1st, JHJ Rohn Company purchased a 12 month insurance policy for $1,800 on October 1st. Record the entry to purchase insurance on July 1st. Then also record the adjusting entry. Should be October 1st.
then record the adjusting entry on December 31st. So would everybody work on those two entries? Hopefully you have your sheets out. All I'm asking for are the entries that are gonna be required on the, and this should be October once again, October when they're bought. Then the adjusting entry So all you're doing is working on 2017 right now. All you're doing is working on these entries for 2017. You buy an insurance, then you make in the adjusting entry. You're buying the insurance and then you're making the adjusting entry. I know y'all got this insurance purchase now. What's my journal entry? Um, it's prepaid insurance. You're gonna debit twenty four. No, not twenty four. Yeah, twenty four hundred, and then you're gonna credit cash for twenty four hundred. Okay, so that's our journal entry. That's correct. And then we get to December 31st and it becomes how much of the insurance has expired. So first of all, we're going to calculate our monthly amount. Hold on, Professor. Are we on question one or question two? Because Question one. Did okay, because question one says 1800. Okay, that should be 1800. Thank you. So the first thing we do is to calculate the monthly amount. So the monthly amount. And we're simply going to take the 1800 and divide it by what? Twelve. What? Twelve. Going to divide by twelve. And so our monthly amount is how much? One hundred and fifty. So our insurance is expiring at the rate of one hundred and fifty a month. So that's our calculation of the monthly amount. So when we get ready to make the AJE. Since October to December is how many months? Three. We're gonna multiply three. One fifty. So how much is that? Four fifty. Four fifty. That's our AJ. Any questions? Audit. We get a monthly amount. We see how many months have expired from purchase date. Line would have been multiplying by six. Months that have expired. 
and multiplying that times a monthly amount. Are there any questions? Now let's move on to our A students to part two of the problem. So it says when October 2018 come around, so now we're in 2018, the company renewed its coverage at a cost of 2,400. So it's renewing its coverage. So what's our journal entry going to be to renew that insurance? You're going to uh, debit prepaid insurance for the 2400 and credit the cash for 2400 That's correct. And we're going to get us a new monthly amount now. So we got a new monthly amount, which is going to be what? 2400 divided by 12, that's going to equal what? 200. How much? 200. Okay, 200. So now the insurance expires at the rate of 200 a month. It expires at the rate of 200 a month. But to get your AJE, you're going to say, okay, January, January to October, we were at the old rate. So we had, we were at what? Nine times 150. So for the first nine months, we our old insurance was in force at nine times 150. But when the new insurance comes in, we have three. Times 200. 200. So nine times 150 is how much? 1380. I'll take your word for it. I got 1350. Okay. 30. It's 1350. Let's go with 1350. 1350. I was off. And three times 200 is what? 600. And we simply are going to add those two numbers together for our AJE. So it will be how much? 1950. Nineteen fifty. That's prepaid insurance. Are there any questions? You said that's for the A students. <laughs> yeah, that's for the A students. You're an A student now, Mayberry? I guess so. Hey. <laughs> Okay. And let's review the final one we looked at last time where we buy the autos. So we're buying eight autos for 30,000. And we're paying 50,000 down. What's our journal entry to buy those autos? You gonna um you say you buy eight autos for thirty thousand and fifty thousand down. Mm-hmm. Okay. So you gonna credit the 
So if we bought eight for 30,000, how much is that? 24,000. 240,000? Yes, sir. What's our credit going to be to? Cash and notes payable. So we're going to credit cash and notes payable. So we're going to credit cash for the 50000 Take 12. I'll let you all put that in. And we're going to credit what? Notes payable. And that's going to be for what, 190? Now we're ready to calculate depreciation expense. Do I have a life on these cars? Five year life on the cars. So we're saying that the cars are depreciating at the rate of what? doing simple straight line depreciation. Is it like the five houses, five year useful life? Mm -hmm. So we're gonna take the 240,000 and do what? Divide it by five years. Okay. So what's that gonna equal? Forty-eight thousand. I take your word for. It. So our depreciation expense becomes forty-eight thousand. Because, but because this is a long-lived asset, we're not going to mess with the original cost. Uh, we got credit accumulate depreciation. And so what will happen will be the car will be on the balance sheet at 240,000. The accumulate depreciation that will show up after this first year is 48,000. So the net cost that is what's left in terms of the value of automobile is going to be what? What's our net value going to be? 240. 192,000. 192,000. So we're saying that the car now is worth 192,000. So that's what it's netting out to be 48,000 has gone to the expense. So when we look at the T accounts, the car is not impacted. So we credited accumulate depreciation and these are, these are companion accounts that go together. So we're always showing what the car originally cost. So if this was supplies, we would have credited supplies. We want to know that cost and the expense goes here. Now, the good thing about these is what? When next year rolls around, same entry, 48,000, assuming we're using straight line appreciation, 48,000. 
So the same entry is made the second year. So the next year, another 48,000 comes here and another 48,000 goes in the expense. Of course, the original would have been closed out. And so now it becomes what? It's still costing 240, but we've written off what? 96,000. So what's the net value of the car left now? One hundred and forty-four thousand. I'll take your word for it. So we're showing the, you know, we still know what the cost is, but we're writing off the depreciation. So you all should be able to do the third year. What's going to be in the AJE? Forty-eight thousand. Forty-eight thousand. You make depreciation credit again for forty-eight thousand. So when we go to our T account, we got another forty-eight thousand, and another forty-eight thousand in the expense the next year. So now our accumulated depreciation now is what? So it's 144,000? 96,000. The cost was 240. It should be. And now we've written it off to what? 144. So the net cost left is 96,000. Mm -hmm. Got that down, Mayberry? Got it. Okay. Let's move on to these last two adjusting entries. AJ83 is a crew revenue. And guess what? You've been making this journey, you've been making this adjust with this entry since day one at the end of the year. It's, it's an adjusted entry, but it's a type 15 and a type three. The crew revenue at the end of the year, as well as during the year, occurs when goods are delivered, but cash has not been received. If you don't make the adjusting entry, assets are understated, revenues are understated. You've done the work, but you don't record. So we may have done work, or we may have performed services. There's gonna be a subsequent entry when you get the cash, that type three. So let's look at our example. Assume a landscaper performs services weekly for a customer at a fee of 375 and bills the customer monthly. So if there are four weeks in December at the end of the year, an AJE will be made to accrue the revenue earned. When the landscaper collects the cash, the subsequent journal entry is made. So can you all handle this journal entry, these two journal entries? Can you all handle it? Like do it on our own? Yeah. Notice how tight, 15, three, 15, 
and 3. And so there are four weeks in December. And what would that mean? As you all try to make it hard. How much does the landscaper want? How much are you going to send the bill out at? Fifteen hundred. Fifteen hundred sounds good to me. Yep. So if the landscaper had cut his customer yard for four weeks in December, he's going to send him a bill for fifteen hundred. This is like corporate income earned from corporate income earned from corporate customers where they're going to pay later. So can y'all make that succeeding entry? When I have a question. Collects? Yes. Uh, Mr. Boyd, where do you see four weeks in the problem? Where'd you get four weeks from? I just assume that there's four weeks in the month oh you know what see they're going to be asking a stupid question you know what ignore me <laughs> that's a good question that's fine <laughs> that's a good question So we just said there are four weeks in December at least, at least four weeks. So we just multiply four times 375. Have y'all got that succeeding entry made? You got it made, Kennedy? I thought, uh, no. <laughs> Somebody has that entry made. Fifteen, then a three. Debit, cash, credit account receivable. I guess the fifteen hundred. So I don't know why y'all trying to make it. Don't you just do fifteen hundred again for both of them, the cash yep. and the cash receipt? Yep. Okay. All we do. That's the fifteen and the three. You've been working on this since day one. We're just saying at the end of the period. You know, it's called an adjusting entry. You may have other accruals in there. You debit or receivable and credit sales when you collect the cash. And the difference would be during the year regularly, you know, all of this is going to be in the year. But in this case, when it's at the end of the year, you won't get the cash until 2018. So you're not getting the cash until 2018, but you got to recognize that revenue in 2017. Any questions? Let's move on to our last category, which are crude expenses. Accrued ex expenses occur when we have incurred expenses but have not paid them at the end of the year. And so if you owe expenses, If you don't make this adjustment, then in ex expenses are understated and liabilities are understated. You owe stuff. 
in your business. And so you got to reflect it and reflect the liability. A lot of times this will occur with unpaid expenses, including interest and accrued salaries and wages. So let's just jump to accrued salaries and wages. Suppose this is our calendar and people are being paid weekly. Okay, they're being paid weekly. They're paid on the 6th. They're paid on the 13th. They're paid on the 20th. They're paid on the 27th. When they work on the 30th and 31st, money is owed to them for two days. These workers have worked and generated revenue. So we got to put these two days worth of work by adjusting entry into uh, the expenses for 2017. They won't be paid until this Friday. But those two days worth of expenses have to be placed it has to be placed in 2017 by adjusting entry. So let's look at this. Crew wages payable occur when an employee works for a period but not paid until the next. So assuming the weekly payroll is $2,500. The weekly payroll is $2,500. So when you get to that last Friday in December the 27th, we're going to debit salary expense. We're going to credit cash, type nine, for 2500 Okay. Now, when we get ready to make this adjusting entry, when we get ready to make the adjusting entry, we look down here and see we have two days. And so the question becomes, how much are we paying each day? So if we're paying 2,500 for five days, we can divide 2,500, divided by five, That's going to equal $500. So that means the workers pay $500 a day. So for these two days right here, the workers are due $1,000. And so we're going to make the adjusting entry, debiting salary expense for $1,000. Crediting wages payable for a thousand. Okay. So we put just those two interests into the accounts. You know, other payments will be in there all year long. This is where things stand in 2017. Now let's go to 2018. When Friday comes around on January 3rd, how much do the workers want to be paid?
How much would you want on Friday the third? Fifteen hundred. How much? Fifteen. Okay. Fifteen hundred. So you're going to work on the 30th and 31st, and because this is the end of the year, you're going to be generous and give that back to the company. And you're going to say, company, you just have to pay me for three days. That's what y'all do. No. Some people are going to be hollering and screaming if they don't get $2,500. Some people are going to holler and scream, I want my $2,500. And so what you've got to do, you got to pay. They've already worked two days in the prior year, and you've recognized expense. So you still got to pay them that $1,000. You just recognize, but you got to pay it. So once you make that entry, then the payable is cleared out. Then for the three days they work during the year, how much is that going to be? It's going to be fifteen hundred. So the workers are going to demand twenty five hundred dollars. On January 3rd, just like you, you all would be in there also. You would not want less than 2500 So we just pick up this $1,000 that we accrued in our adjusting entry for the prior year, and we pay the liability of type A. Then we pay the current, the three days in the current year that'll work. First, second, and third, we pay those days. So we're still paying twenty five hundred. Only fifteen hundred in expenses are recognized on uh, in that next year, twenty eighteen, where we're gonna debit the liability for the part that was recognized in twenty seventeen. So all companies all around the world operate that way. When they make that first payment in 2018, that succeeding entry, they pay what they accrued the prior year and they pay the current year expense. Okay. Let's see. So we did the $2,500 a week. Why don't you all see if you can work the problem if they pay 5000 weekly? So can you all make those interest? If they're paid five thousand weekly, so what I'm what I want you to do is to make an entry to pay the full week, the last week. Then I want the adjusting entry, which is going to look the same, and the succeeding entry is going to look the same. You just got to change the amounts. So can you handle this? If the pay is 5,000 a week, can you make those three entries? Yeah. All right, well, go calculate them. Take four minutes and calculate them. You got four minutes to make those entries. And you got space here to do it. So just put it in here.
Okay, do we have this adjusting entry made? I believe so. So what's the regular payments? What would it be since we're weekly? Huh? Oh, so they get paid 5000 a week. We're paying them 5000 a week. Mm-hmm. So what's our adjusting entry going to be? Your adjusting entry is... So we going to go off the other one when they work two days, right? Correct. So you divide that 5000 by the five, and you get 1000 a day, and you times that by the two days they work, which is 2000 So the adjusting entry would be 2000 the salary expense credit salary is payable for two thousand. Yeah, Remember that the AJE always stays the same. Then what's it going to look like when we get into twenty eighteen to pay them? Well, you got to pay them for the two days they worked last year plus the three days they're going to work at the beginning of the year. But then you're going to keep five thousand. So it's going to be two thousand, three thousand, and five thousand. Sounds good to me. Are there any questions? I have a question again, Mr. Boyd. I'm sorry. That's okay. Okay, so let, let's go back. Okay, so for December 31st, um, you know, he was gone so fast, <laughs> but okay, so how did he get 2000 again? If they pay 5000 weekly, then the rate of pay is a thousand a week. I mean, a thousand a day, excuse me. So the workers are making a thousand dollars per day. Okay. So in this case, go back up there. The workers are due. A thousand dollars on Monday and a thousand dollars on Tuesday. Those two thousand dollars have been earned by the workers. We got to get that expense in the 2017. The only way we can get that two thousand in the 2017 is a debit salary expense and credit salary is payable. Otherwise, we won't have this in there. So we won't be able to subtract that expense. So the income taxes we pay would be higher. So Cutting is going to make this entry, OK? They're going to make this entry because they want to lower their taxes. OK, I'm still not understanding where you got the two days from. Like, where does it say that they have worked two days? We said that they're paid on the 6th. And those, these are good questions. The 13th, the 20th, and the 27th. They always are paid on the last day of the, the last Friday in the month. So we come down here to the 30th and 31st. That's two days they work. So this is where the two come from. However many days it is, work days since the last Friday. Okay, so that's how you got the two thousand, and then for the three thousand, you just added on another day. So they get when we get when the workers get into that first, that third on the uh, pay pay period. When they get ready, when they come to Friday, they want five thousand mm -hmm. dollars. So you could have made your adjusting entry, but those workers are going to work. They're going to work. Want five thousand on the twenty seventh? They want five thousand again on the third, and they want five thousand on the tenth. And if you were working, you want the same thing. An adjusting entry has just been made so that part of this payment of five thousand is recognized as an expense in twenty seventeen. Two thousand of it. The other 3000 is recognized as an expense in 2018. They pay 5000 It's going to be an expense. But 2000 of it is going to be an expense in 2017, 3000 in 2018, because two days occurred in 2017. 
Okay, so basically 2017, they worked those two days, so it was $2,000. 2018, they worked three days, so it was $3,000, but they're always going to get paid $5,000 on the paydays. All right, that's what they need. Right. Okay, I get it now. Okay, sounds good. But those are good to see. A lot of people have those questions, and so those are good in terms of clarifying. I think, you know, you, that would help a lot of people out. So I appreciate that. Questions help. So if you got questions, ask them because they help other people out. Now, for the B and C students, here's your study problem due on Thursday. You got some balances as of December 31st, 2019. You got to put these balances in the T accounts. So cash is going to start off with 70,000 and so forth. So cash is going to have 70,000, retained earnings 27,000. So this is the first thing that you're going to do put these balances in the T accounts. Then you're going to make these 13 adjusting, you know, these 13 journal entries and prepare these statements. And your midterm is going to look just like this. So you need to go and practice on this and get it done. Then your midterm will look just like this. Probably 10 of these for C students and 12 for B students. So it won't be 13. Some would be adjusting entries, some would not, but you know, the focus is going to be on adjusting entries. So if you can do this, you can pass the midterm. Are there any questions? Um, I have a question. Wait, it's uh, Thursday. Correct, Thursday before class. So you would have, you know, worked on this before class. Is our midterm on Tuesday? No, it's your midterm is Thursday. Now the A students already have their take home midterm. It's due on. Monday. So you don't come to class on Thursday. You work okay. on the midterm. We just, uh, we just start, we just start our um, midterm on Thursday or we'll turn in on Thursday. Which one? For the A students, they're starting, they should have started last night. Mm -hmm. And they got a week until next Monday. I know Kiana's almost finished with hers. They got a week until next Monday to get it done. That's them. For everybody else, you got a study problem that's like your midterm. You're going to complete that study problem for me by 11 o'clock on Thursday. Then you're going to get a midterm that looks just like that study problem. Oh, okay. Makes sense. Okay. Okay. That makes sense. I got you. Okay. All right. So you got two pages. Okay, that's cool. Extra points. Wait, Mr. Boyd, I have a question. I'm sorry. Okay, so um, so how are you doing the grading? Because okay, I see how you said like the A student midterms, uh, you know, you gave you gave us 73 problems. Um I it was 70. No, there's 73, but I'm just wondering how are you doing the grading on this? Because, you know, I'm not I'm not stupid. You know, I'm not trying to, you know, be like, oh, I'm stupid. But I'm just wondering, like, how did I fall under the A student midterm? And there's 73 questions. Like, Mr. Boy, do you believe in me? And that's why you gave it to me? Yeah. Oh, OK. So are these just regular journal entries? Or yeah. these are, a, OK, because. Yeah. They're basically re regular journal entries. Uh, some would, you know, 
a lot more of the adjusting interest and everything that will be in there. And the thing is to, you know, just to challenge you in terms of, okay, rather than just a short, simple midterm, a take home for you to study and learn this in more detail. But if you prefer, you know, the short midterm, you can always email me and say, I want short midterm. And you take it on Thursday. So you, you do have a choice. Okay, I'm gonna accept the challenge and see what I can do. You know, let me get up there. And typically, you know, when, when I do this, none of the A students get less than an A on it, okay? So if you're in that category, you know, when I grade it, you know, you know which is typically has happened on assignments this time, and through the years, the A students do a great job on it, and they keep the A's, just do more work, okay? So it's, it's not to really drop your grade down, but to challenge you, you know, so you operating at a higher level. And then, and then it's a matter of, okay, with students who are not at that level, I don't want to over challenge them and frustrate them. See, so that's all what would, would happen there. So I separate it out. Mr. Boyd. Yes. So I got a good question. Okay, a good question. Yeah, yeah. So look, check me out. So say say I was in like a, a B or a C student. What if I wanted to take a B test or something like that? Would I get extra points for taking that test? How is yeah. that way? That's how it works. What I want to take the B test then. I don't know if I'm a B student, but I want to take the B test. But if I get a B on that, then I mean I'm a B student. <laughs> exactly. Hey, I feel that. You can always request to move high. That's that's I want to move high on this people, video. They miss, are they really are having a tough time? I want to make sure they can pass and not be frustrated, okay? So I give them a C test. These students, if they perform well enough on a B test, can you know get to the A minus range. See, that's what I need to be at. That's what I'm talking about. Let me go and take the B test. For the A students, because what they're doing is harder, I'm typically not going to drop their grades out of the A range. It's just a matter of whether they get a 90 on it or 100 based on how they perform. And, you know, so, you know, they work hard enough already. So most of them, you know, they're going to go and make that effort at it. And they'll stay within that range. They just would have worked hard. Okay? Because, they, you know, you got to be an A student next semester too. Okay, so you can't do C semester work this, uh, C, some, C semester and get an A this time. And then be ready for next semester when a professor is going to expect you to know all of this. Okay, so so next semester we you know we go to managerial accounting. What we managerial accounting assumes you understand everything we do it now, and then they get into how to build something, and so we build it on top of this. But it's assumed that you know how to do this in and out. So you've got to scratch and work on some difficult things so it sticks. Okay. So what we're doing sticks. So that's that's what we're doing. So that does that kind of explain it? And you're all you all good class. Y'all were y'all been doing well, right? Y'all been doing well so far, right? Right, A students. Right, Mary? Yeah, so that's not going to change. So if you have any questions, if, you know, we run into a snag, you know, then just check with me. Okay.
But you know, I sign it every year, and you know, you know, even this summer when we were on five weeks, there was you know, typically in the summer, you know, we because we're moving every day, you know, students are going to class every day. They kind of learn a little bit better sometimes. But during the summer, when they had only about three days to do it, they did it. So you got a week. Any further questions? Okay. So once again, remember, we'll be back on campus on Tuesday. You know, be safe. Have your mask on. As someone, you know, said last time, we're going back. They were being tested. So you need to have your mask on. Uh, because, you, you know, a lot of things can happen. Have your good mask on. Okay, so let's have a good midterm period. I'm hoping everybody who's here today, I'm planning on everybody who's here today to pass the midterm with a C at least if they were here today and did what they needed to do. Did that handout help any? So yeah, it helped me out. It helped me out a lot. Okay. So I just tried to pull it together so it'll be easier to work with and everything. And so we try to make adjustments, but it's learning. But like I said, you you've got to learn at a rate for next semester. You you can't just have it, you can't be learning for this semester to forget it. You got to be learning at a rate. So next semester, you can build on this. Any other questions? Mr. Boyd, can I talk to you when like everybody leaves, if you have time? Sure. OK, thank you. Do we have I'll any assignments? Oh, Joy is here. Joy. Hi, Dr. Boyd. How are we doing? The 2.30 class is meeting face to face today. Ooh, okay. And this class will move face to face starting on uh, next Tuesday. For the ones who are doing the uh, take home midterm, any suggestions for them since you did it? Uh, you blocked it out your memory. What is our our midterm? Your midterm is on Thursday. And it'll yeah. be it'll be during class? Yes. Over over AJE, right? Or in succeeding entry. Right. And so I think you came on late, but there's a study problem. And your midterm is going to look like the study problem. Okay, yeah, I saw the study problem. I see you. Okay. Joe, are you still there? Yes, sir. Any words of wisdom for the ones who are doing the take home midterm? Uh, um, don't rush through it. Make sure you're really paying attention to what it is you're really reading through the journal entries because if you're not paying attention to that it's going to mess you. so you'll be fine you'll be fine okay so you have it for someone that's really all i got done it before say so what I said that's all i got that's all and joy is a management major i couldn't get her to change to accounting but she, she, she still no works. No intentions on changing. I work hard at that. So we work hard on some of you all. So y'all got to get this down so y'all can volunteer to tutor next year like Joe is doing. Because Joe is graduating in May. So I'll need some replacement folks. Professor Boyd? Yes. 
Just to clarify, so the study problem that's already on Blackboard, that's just like an example of what the midterm will look like? Correct. And, and you get points for doing it. So you're getting 10 points for doing it. And the midterm is going to look like that, where you have some beginning balances. OK, thank you. You're welcome. So remember to put the beginning balances into the T accounts. So for the A student, you, your first 40 transactions are now in your T account. And you're doing the next, what is it, 30? So I guess you said 73. So I guess it's 33, so it's not 40 more. So you see how the process looks. Anything else? Okay, so best of luck. Check with Joy on myself if you have any questions on the midterm. And, I, and you know, everybody's going to be fine. Everybody's going to be fine. Okay, so Kenneth is going to be on. You all have a good one. Check with me. Uh, if there are any issues, and we'll see you all face to face on next Tuesday. Okay, so if everybody else will sign out so I can talk to Kennedy. And then when you're done talking to Kennedy, I need to talk to you as well. Okay. Kennedy, the other people probably gone. Sometimes they have trouble getting out of the thing, the system. Okay. Okay, Mr. Boyd. So my first question is, you know, I'm I'm probably pressing the situation. Mr. Boyd, did you ever go back and look at the journal entries, the 40 ones for me? Uh I'm not sure if I got to yours or not. I had the same question. Oh. <laughs> Okay, well, don't forget about me. I mean, you can't really because I stay asking you some questions, but um, that was one of my, so, okay, I'm not saying that, you know, I don't believe in myself because that's not the case, but I'm just wondering, like, how did I end up, I don't have a problem doing the A student midterm since I'm on there, but if I don't um, succeed on it, will that go against my grade? No, because you won't go below a B. Okay, so even though I do, if I do real terrible on it, it's not going to get going going to go against my grade. No, you're not going to do terrible on it. Okay, anyway. I'm just wondering now, because Mr. Boy, you laughing, but I promise you, this class be having my back hurt. I be stressed. I, I need a melatonin to sleep. I'm telling oh, you. Oh, oh, you're doing fine. Okay, you you're in the top ten people in the class. I don't know how because I have a 79 in your class. Like I don't care who else is on here to hear it, but I have a 79. Like I don't understand how. Or well, in the grade book, like for Blackboard, but like it's I think it's because that 40 entries messed me up because I only got half points. That's why I just don't understand. Well, maybe I corrected it, and that's why you don't. That's why you up high. Let me let me see if I can pull you up. So for the grades on Blackboard, don't pay attention too much to what's on Blackboard. Whatever he posts on the Excel sheet, pay attention to that because that's what your actual grade is at. Oh, wait, where is it on the Excel sheet? In course content. Um, I think he posted under co yeah, course yes. content. Yes. Um, it shows our grades? Like it says grade? Oh, yes. grades. Which one are yeah. we clicking? The second one or the first one? 
Look at yes, yeah, don't pay attention too hard to what's on Blackboard, but pay attention to it because that's where that's where we read stuff. But whenever whenever Dr. Boy posts like the Excel sheets, it's when you really know, oh, this is what my actual grade is. So I click so on the second one. Everything's not in Blackboard. Oh, okay. So wait, hold on. Oh, okay, so I wait. I'm not on the second one. The second link. So I think I, I think the Excel account. sheets are going by your T accounts. None T oh, accounts. Your numbers. numbers. Yeah, I don't see my number on that second link. The second, if y'all if y'all know what I'm saying, like the second one, y'all know what I'm saying. The second file, if that makes sense. What's on the first? Um. Yeah, I'm not on this first one either. You sure? Oh, I found me. I found me on the first one. I found me. I'm not on the. I'm not on the second one, but I found me on the first one. <laughs> what, Mr. Boyd? Ain't no way I got that in your class. Oh my gosh, Mr. Boyd, you make me want to stay as finance. Y'all was gonna change my major because of this class. This is giving me stress, but you actually made me want to go through my career. Okay. Yeah, you you tell. So the rest of your class, focus on what's on Blackboard. Focus on what's on the Excel sheet. The Excel sheet is where your actual. And you know you're going by Davis, right? Yes. Not Kennedy, it's Davis. And oh, see... wait. Mm -hmm. <laughs> wait, it's, it's the P numbers, right? Where do you see the last names on there? You don't know. Your t you got a 95, okay? Yeah, that's why I was so shocked. Look, I'm finna go celebrate. <laughs> Let me stop. Okay. <laughs> yeah, <I know. laughs> okay. <laughs> Let me get off the phone with y'all. Bye, Mr. Boy. Bye, Joy. I'll see y'all in class next Bye. time. Bye. Okay. Mr. Boy, I was just checking to see if you uh, had ever fixed what we was talking about. Okay, so what was I supposed to look at, Corey, for you? um you told me that if i did uh the trial balance for the 40 journal entry that she was going to go back and um fix the other grades as well when i was out from COVID, and then i was out when they dropped me from my classes okay so let me put a note in here and i'll look at corey so a lot of time i've gone back but you can see what's happening i've gone back and and she just wasn't looking at the right thing. So most time, but I may not have gotten yours yet. And I think what I told you is that I was gonna look at your midterm. And I was gonna make the adjustments based on that before the miss work. Okay. So, um this was this was a minute before the midterm, but that's fine. No, I'm just saying that I'm looking at what you missed. See, the midterm covers those things. So yeah, you've got, you got a 20 point quiz and a trial balance on this test. So you got some things that are missing. Uh, and so I've got this note on it. I got it in red. I will make the adjustments when I do the midterm, okay? All right, yes sir, appreciate it. And the midterm is on Thursday. Correct. During class time? Yes. All right. Thank you, Mr. Boyd. You're welcome. What's going on, Miss Joy? All right. So you know how I was going through the whole Delta Pro, my letter of recommendation and everything? Mm-hmm. So I got an interview and I got accepted into like the rest of the membership member process. Congratulations. Thank you. So now here's the, here's the bad news. Um, all of November, mm -hmm. I will be very much so busy and will not have time to grade and pretty much help anybody. Yeah, I understand that. Because honestly, because all I have time for is studying for the test and mm -hmm. school. Yeah, yeah, I can understand that. That's why I asked you before, but uh who is 
Uh, Kayla Williams is starting I'll, to help be... now. Jesus. So she's going to be there to do some face to face on Tuesdays and Thursdays in tutoring. Okay. Because I'll but, at least be able, no. like, if I pass the dad, if I pass the um, the test that's coming up, I'll be able. Mm, then, yeah, my, no, November is pretty much out the window for me. But I believe I should be finished around the end of November and be able to help with finals. That'll and then work. hopefully once I can help with finals and then I'll, I'll be able to come back for uh, next semester. Okay, that sounds good. That'll work. Okay, so I'm going to go let, let them down gently. It's like, hey, I cannot help nobody. Do not ask me any questions. Don't email me. I can't help you right but now. But you're with Kayla, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so she's going to be there to help. So I'm going to see if I can. Um, and I'll be I'm going to add her to like the group meetings and everything. Yeah, okay. And I, it's going to be face-to-face. -face and like the day I updated what I did on adjusting entries and that helped them out. So, you know. It, okay. It'll be okay, but I appreciate it. Okay. But I'll wait for it to come back. All righty, because I have the um, like the answer keys done for the financial statements and stuff like that. I have those done. I've just been obnoxiously busy to put the grades in. Okay. So I can send I, them to Kayla or send them to you. Okay. I have done two thirty one oh three. Okay. If you got two thirty one oh two done and you can put that in, that'll be a great help. Okay, if I can, I will. Okay. Okay. Thanks a lot. And I'll let Joe. you know. I'll let you know how the rest of this process goes. Let me know. I think you're I gonna shall. be okay. I think we'll be okay. Right. I think so too. All right. And I'm stressed and tired now, but it's gonna be all right. All right. Check by if you get a chance today, because I'll be on campus. All right. All right. Okay. Bye. All right. Bye.